that uh, captures how people desire to make the shortest way from A to B by themselves. Because a lot of city planners and landscape architects, uh, while designing, they always forget to facilitate the shortest way from A to B. So this is at an, uh, a tank station, uh, a gasoline station, and people want to go there. And there's a footpath here and here, here and here in the background. But yeah, it's the part of human instinct, I guess, that um, we always want to take the shortest way from A to B. And um, yeah. It, occur, it occurred to me, I think in 2010, uh, when I was on a holiday in the Czech Republic, that um, yeah, I saw it almost on every street corner. I saw small paths that, yeah, big paths. It, it, it was really a very common phenomenon that there were more um, desire paths actually that there were um, normal pavements or yeah normal streets um, and yeah it also brought a small laugh to my face and I thought like hey why why don't those landscape architects and city planners facilitate the shortest way from A to B what's wrong with them um, and I started to make some pictures some more pictures I had like 10 of them and I thought like hey this is something um, but it didn't occur to me that I could also uh, make this series in the Netherlands. And yes, actually in every, every country that I visited, um, they exist. Some people say like, well, for instance, in a country like Switzerland or Singapore, where they have like uh, huge regulations uh, from above, um, people are not so, um, yeah, invited to make their own path, but yeah, Maybe Singapore, maybe North Korea, I don't know. Um, maybe there are no desire paths, but I think there are. Because the human instinct is so strong to always win, especially when we see our destination. Um, yeah, there's nothing in our mind that's, that say then, uh, well, maybe we can take a detour, maybe we can walk a little bit more, more. No, no. When we see our destination, it's very clear. We want to go there as fast as possible. Um, this book and the series that is uh, exhibited in the Dijon M Museum is the best explanation to it. There are like uh, 70 pictures that, um, yeah, that are giving a tribute to uh, the human instinct that always want to have the shortest way from A to B. Um, and when I made the book, um, the, the funny side effect was that uh, people saw it as a great metaphor to life. Um, because it's also a great power that we have inside to always find the most practical solution to every problem. Uh, that's always that, that's also what a desire path actually is um, and the question that I actually got the most the last uh, years about this subject is uh, Jan Dirk people ask me Jan Dirk why do city planners don't just path the way we want to walk yeah that's actually the basic uh, the basic question that that I have in my mind as well um, and I ask a lot of city planners and landscape architects hey why yeah yeah is the solution not deadly simple um, there were experiments uh, in the 60s and the 70s uh, called the Oregon experiment and some uh, experiments in Finland when um, architects de designed a new uh, a new neighborhood um, there were a few experiments where they uh, didn't design the paths. No pavements, no paths. They just waited for like a few months um, for people to yeah, walk in the shortest way from A to B in a very organic way. Uh, and then they, um, uh, they ordered the construction workers to, uh, uh, to concrete the path. And then there were no desire paths anymore. Because, yeah, we already showed uh, the construction workers uh, what our desired path is. Um, so that's actually this solution. I don't know why this 
strategy is not followed on uh, in the years later maybe it's uh, also quite expensive um, way to construct because you have to wait months and months to go further and further and to uh, finalize a project um, i think that's that's the best uh, the best reason i made um, actually a new book it's called typical dutch and there are also uh, there's also the desire lines or desire paths in it as you can see um, the funny thing is uh, we have a kind of fence construction here to prevent uh, bikers to enter um, uh, enter footpaths in the Netherlands. And uh, we do that with this kind of fence construction. Um, never works. There's always a desire path next to it. Uh, so I also now into subcategories of the Desire Line Path series that I made in 2011. So I tried to develop myself also bit by bit. Um, but yeah, this is a very everyday subject that uh, yeah I'm really mesmerized on. Um, and it's, it's so the yeah the way actually I think is the most ideal way of urban city planning would be the yeah according to the Oregon experiment and to uh, some um, uh, experiments in Finland, in Finland in the last century um, that we just wait with making the paths till um, we find out uh, which way people want to walk um, in that way um, we will have like almost zero desire paths um, that will vandalize uh, the beautiful uh, uh, green structures we also want to have but there's one yeah, almost most important thing uh, in this topic and that everybody I spoke to in the professional landscaping world uh, construction workers uh, people across yeah just civilians they love the phenomenon of a desire path and yeah Everybody thinks it's a very cute phenomenon. It's a, it's a very optimistic um, uh, proof of um, yeah, uh, civilian obedience, actually, or disobedience, I mean. Um, so it's just a small thing that we have as uh, inhabitants of our own city to um, just silently say what we want. And that's very, yeah. Very, that makes people um, have a warm heart to it. Uh, they love the desire path topic. So they, if they, if they on a certain point know that hey, the shortest way from A to B, I don't walk this way. <laughs> I just take a shortcut every day. And then on yeah, if you do this every day for one year, you you just save yourself so much energy. Um, that's what people love. So on one way, it's yeah, I yeah, I'm already thinking of this for like ten years, but there's no better way to say it. Um, people know it's a small defect in their own uh, in their own design, um, but people love it. So when they uh, when urban planners, landscape architects are working on a plan and they think like, hey. The chance will be quite big that on this point uh, there will be a small desire path. Um, they will, they will not change anything because they already know. Like we love, we love to take a desire path. So I think that's the most, the most obvious reason why there are still in 2022 so much desire paths all over the world. Um, yeah. The funny thing is, in the Dutch, it's called olifantpaadje, an elephant path. Um, that's what I found. It's um, a metaphor to uh, the paths that uh, elephants in the jungle in Thailand or in Africa will make uh, to have the shortest way from A to B. They are so big, they can make their own path anyway. And it's always the shortest way from A to B, so um, uh, humans also take it um, afterwards. Um, but for instance, in France, uh, people say Chemin de l'Anne, and that means uh, the path of the donkey. 
um, yeah, they always they also make those desire paths. So uh, in German, it's Trampelpfad, 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 hmm, something like that. Um, and that's uh, how you stamp in the path yourself with your feet. That's also great. Um, but in English, I like yeah, I like the English uh, term most actually. The path that we really wish to walk on, the desire path. That's beautiful, though. Um, so I hope in Korea uh, you have the responsibility now to make as many paths that as possible that facilitate you the shortest way from A to B, because that's your future. Um, if you want to be exhausted, go to the gym. Don't go walking and take a detour. Just the shortest way from A to B. It's more practical. Um, and that's the metaphor to life also, which I referred to a little bit earlier. Uh, you can uh, put a step on the horizon, on a dot on the horizon when you say like, hey, I want to go there. Um, and you can follow the routes that people thought, uh, already thought out for you. Uh, but no, you can also think of your own mind and say like, hey, this is the way I want to walk. And that's the shortest way to the dot on the horizon that I've found myself. Um, so there's a lot more to it. It's just a small path and it's a metaphor to life.